Good morning. Looks like we made it through um, last week, which was cold and snowy. Winter has definitely hit Billings. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the snow. I know it's fun to have the change of seasons. I don't know if it's fun to have it this early, but it is nice to see some snow on the ground and um, it makes me in the mood for Thanksgiving and Christmas and we haven't even had Halloween yet. <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you guys had a good week. Uh, I know um, we were supposed to do Kids Club and Confirmation and Youth Group was supposed to go to the corn maze on Wednesday. Um, but because of the weather, we ended up canceling those activities. And we've tentatively, tentatively have rescheduled those for next Wednesday, the 28th. Um, and I will definitely keep you all posted um, to let you know if we are able um, to do those activities on Wednesday. But in the meantime, um, it is time for children's time with me. Um, so let's get to it. Um, we're once again going to read our story today out of our Spark Bible. And um, our story today is another uh, story about Jesus. And he's talking with the Pharisees. Remember, the Pharisees were kind of the leaders of the church uh, back in Jesus' time. And some of the Pharisees didn't really like Jesus, or they weren't really fond of him. So they were always trying to trick him or get him in a trap to make him... Uh, make a bad statement or say something that was incorrect. And that story, again, that is happening again in the story I'm going to read today. So our story today is called The Greatest Commandment. And here it is. Here's our pictures. There's Jesus. And you can see the Pharisees are all around him, and they all look like they're kind of being sneaky and trying to trick Jesus. And they have their mean faces on. And Squiggles looks scared. Um worried that they're going to hurt Jesus, but Jesus doesn't look scared at all. He just is happy and he's confident in, you know, what he's going to say is correct. So let's go ahead and read our story. The Greatest Commandment. The Pharisees were a group of people who had lots and lots of laws. All together, they had more than 600 laws. Whoa! That is a lot of rules to follow. One day, one of the Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, what is the greatest law? He didn't think Jesus would, could possibly pick just one law out of so many. He was trying to trick Jesus. But Jesus knew the man was trying to trick him. He looked at the man and smiled. Love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, Jesus said, this is the greatest of all commandments. But there is another really important one too. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you obey these two laws, then you obey all of the laws. We have a two-pager today. Look at the Pharisees now. They're like, oh. they can't believe that Jesus actually answered their question. Um, they are in awe. So let's see how our story ends. The Pharisees' jaws dropped. They were shocked to know just how smart Jesus was. They were surprised Jesus had answered their question and turned their trick around on them. They didn't know what to say. Then Jesus had a question for them. What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? That was an easy question for the Pharisees. They grew up learning in school that the Messiah came from the house of David. So that's what they told Jesus. Then why do all of the people from the family of David praise David as the Messiah? Jesus asked. Now that was a hard question. The Pharisees didn't have an answer. They backed away and didn't trick Jesus again. And my little star note, which I sometimes read, sometimes it says, how would you feel if you were Jesus and a big group of people tried to trick you? I'm sure most people would feel hurt or embarrassed, um, but Jesus didn't. He was confident and he knew the answer he was giving them was correct. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as you would love yourself. And that is a 
perfect law to have um, in these days, especially when we have so much um, turbulent things happening and COVID's going around and it's a, really a special time to make sure we love each other like we would love ourselves and love love our neighbors, love our family and our friends. And I think when Jesus says, love your neighbor, he isn't just talking about your literal neighbor that lives next door to you in your house. Um, he's talking about everybody you meet, um, all your friends, all your family, your teachers, um, other kids at school, even if you don't know them, um, if you have a class with them, just treat them like you would want to be treated. And I think that was Jesus, uh, his the important message he was trying to give the Pharisees. So um, I just have one little activity for you guys today. Well, actually two, but one is only um, requires writing or paper. <laughs> um, the other one, I've got my um, Spark workbook. And this one is actually the life of Jesus. And um, under here, under my little note, it says, make some time for kindness fun. It says, as a family, do something kind to show love to your neighbors. Weed a friend's garden or shovel their driveway. Leave cookies on a neighbor's doorstep. Read a book to a younger neighbor. Visit an older neighbor. What other kind of actions can you think of? Um, I know right now it's really hard for us to visit like our grandmas and grandpas with COVID going around. Um, we're not supposed to be meeting in big groups or visiting people that are in high risk of getting sick. But instead of maybe visiting your grandma and grandpa physically, you could uh, call them on the telephone or send them a card. Um, and same with your neighbors. Um, make some cookies and do set them on their step. You don't have to actually visit with them, but just leave them there for them to find when they get home. And especially now with all the snow we're getting, shoveling somebody's driveway, believe me, is one of the biggest, nicest gifts you can give somebody. <laughs> um, it's a lot of hard work to shovel your driveway, especially when you get older. It's hard work and to have a young kid come and do that, it really means a lot to people. So that is your first assignment. So do something kind for a neighbor. And our second assignment um, I want you to do this. Um, this requires a piece of paper and either some markers or a pen or a pencil. And it says, love your neighbor as yourself, which comes from Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. And it says, as a family, make a list of ways you can show love to one another. Put Jesus's commandment at the top. And so number your paper one through, I did number one through 10, and I'll show you that in a minute. So number one would be love God. Number two would be love others. And then put Jesus's commandment at the top. And then where will you put the list as a reminder to each other? Put that list somewhere where you can see it on a daily basis, where you can see it, your mom, your dad, um, if you have any brothers or sisters, where you guys can all see it. Um, and make sure to complete the list of some nice acts and then Maybe once when you do these things, just maybe do a little check mark by it. So here is mine. And if you can see, I want you to write on the top that verse, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. So just write that across the top. Number your page down. Um, I just did one through 10. And then the first thing you can do to show love to your neighbor and to yourself is to love God and then also love others. So think of, you know, five or six or seven more things that you could do for someone um, that would be nice. And that's uh, some of the things that I named off on your other task. Uh, shovel someone's driveway, send them a card, call them and just say, hi, I'm thinking about you and I miss you. Um, Anything like that. Do the dishes for your mom. Make your bed in the morning before you go to school. All those things can be uh, something that helps your neighbor. You may not think of your mom or your dad as a neighbor, but they are. They're somebody in your life that you know. Um, and believe me, they love it when you do nice things for them. So that is it for today. I hope you guys 
stay warm and stay inside if you don't like the snow. And if you love the snow, get out and do some sledding or skiing or anything fun. Build a snowman, make a snow angel, and uh, just have some fun this week. And um, if you didn't notice, I am filming from my kitchen today, or from my house today. It's actually my dining room. Just kind of a little change of pace. So anyway, I miss you guys, and I hope you're doing great. And I'll be with you again next week. And until then, let's go ahead and say a quick prayer. And then we'll go from there. So praying hands, heart hands, hands on your heart. Um, I'll do praying hands. It says, we love you, God, with all our hearts, all our souls, and all our minds. Help us to love everyone. Amen. All right, guys, have a good week, and I will see you next time. Bye.